Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Having trained more than 24,000 vets. Helping you and your fur babies thrive. Live in studio on Independent Dog 1100 KFNX. It's Pet Talk Today with Will Bangura. Answering your pet behavior and training questions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host and favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Will Bangura, and you're listening to Pet Talk Today on Independent 1100 KFNX, where I'm here every Sunday from 12 to 1 p.m. answering your pet behavior and training questions. If you have a question about your pet's behavior or a question about training your pet, give me a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding metro area, the number to call is 602-277-5369, 602-277-KFNX. If you're outside of the Phoenix area, you can call toll-free at 866-536-1100. Sitting across from me in studio today is KFNX political guru, Bill Brady, (laughs) host of the Bill Brady Show Monday through Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. and host of... 2020 election coverage with Bill Brady, which airs right before Pet Talk today each Sunday. Hey, Bill, how are you? I'm good. Good. Now, Bill, because your show 2020 election coverage precedes this show, last week I thought I would try to, you know, kind of draw in some of your listeners who are politically minded. So last week in the show, if you remember, I did a bit, a shtick. <laughs> All right, some political satire where I talked about Trump calling people dogs, that Trump hated dogs like he hates Democrats. You know, I thought it was good humor and poking some fun at Trump and, you know, trying to pull the whole dog theme into it. Well, apparently some took it way too seriously (laughs) and didn't see the humor in me poking fun at the president. Now, for those of you that might have missed last week's show where I poked some fun at Trump. Let's take another listen so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Can we go ahead and play clip one? A lot of people choke. They choke like dogs. They can't breathe. Oh! He choked. He went away. He choked. It's just like a dog. He choked. I'm watching Marco sweating like a dog on my right. And he was fired like a dog. They throw you the hell out like a dog. She lied like a dog. I see her barking like a dog. Right? No, she's barking like a dog. He was run out of office like a dog. He died like a dog. So, Bill... That's what I played. And if you remember, after I played the clip of Trump, and when we started to take calls, we received a call from Bonnie. Yeah. Now, Bonnie was all worked up. You know, we actually had to dump the call because I, I think she was about ready to use the F-bomb. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, I thought that that would be the end of it, but I was wrong. Uh, this past week, I actually received an email from Bonnie, and Bonnie was Still upset. So much so that she actually said I was, let's see, how did she put it? Um, mainlining the Kool-Aid, I think is how <laughs> she said it. Yeah, she was upset that I played the tape of Trump saying that she, meaning Hillary, was barking like a dog. So I thought, you know, in the spirit of bipartisanship, and for you, Bonnie, I decided that I should play the other side of it and let you hear what then presidential candidate Hillary Clinton said and see if she actually did bark like a dog. So here we go. (laughs) Roll clip two. Wouldn't it be great if somebody running for office said something, we could have an immediate reaction as to whether it was true or not? Well, we've trained this dog and the dog... If it's not true, he's going to bark. I'm trying to figure out how we can do that with the Republicans. You know, we need we need to get that dog and follow follow them around. And every time they say these things like, oh, you know, the Great Recession was caused by too much regulation. You know, so so there it is. There's Hillary barking like a dog. Look, you know. I'm not a Democrat and, and I'm not a Republican. I'm actually a registered independent. I literally don't have a dog in this race per se this is humor bonnie don't be offended for crying out loud so today i thought i'd have a little more fun with this and and give trump a little bit of a break by doing a little oppo research on biden 
You know, I wondered, had Biden ever said anything crazy calling calling anyone a dog? What I found was actually just the opposite. So here's what I found. He's in this interview. And in this interview, Biden is showing a reporter how his German shepherd champ can talk and how Biden can actually talk back to his dog. It's incredible. It's like Joe Biden is some kind of a Democratic Dr. Doolittle. Here, let, let's take a listen. Roll clip three. He's a talker. Watch this. Hey, champ, you want to play golf? <laughs> well, where's the golf club? <laughs> well, well, go get the golf club. Well, well go get the golf club. <laughs> it's about the funniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, go get the golf club. <laughs> All right, watch. Watch this. Okay, let's go get it. Let's get the golf club. Let's just get it. What? Watch this. You ready? You ready? Now, don't knock the cameraman down. We can't go out that door. Now, I was all happy because here we go. We've got Biden, and he's like, he's not disparaging the word dog. But uh, luckily for Bonnie, I didn't stop there. And I kept on looking, and this is what I found. So in this next clip, Biden is at a town hall meeting in New Hampshire. Now, to put this into context, this is right after the Iowa caucus, where he basically lost Iowa like a tired, beaten old dog. Anyway, there's this 22-year-old college girl at the town hall meeting in New Hampshire, and she's asking Biden, why should they vote for him after losing Iowa so bad, and can he win a national election? And, well, that's where things got a little bit interesting for Biden and went a little bit south. Roll clip four. So how do you explain the performance in Iowa, and why should the voters believe that you can win the national election? It's a good question. Number one, Iowa's a Democratic caucus. You ever been to a caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lying dog faced pony soldier. You said you were, but you're, you're, now you gotta be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. You're a lying dog faced pony soldier. You're a lying dog faced pony soldier. <laughs> lying dog faced pony soldier? Are you kidding me? Not only does Biden say that she's got a dog face, but he calls her a liar and, and whatever a pony soldier is. Now, now that's the way to talk to millennials and garner the youth vote in America. Great job, Mr. Vice President. So I thought it might be fun, you know, political humor, Bonnie, to put this little montage of our 2016 and 2020 presidential candidates, Trump, Hillary, and Joe Biden together. And I've asked Megyn Kelly, who used to be at Fox News, and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi as a little cherry on top to help me out. Let's roll clip five. And I see her barking like a dog, right? Oh, she's barking like a dog. And everyone said, oh, wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't that wonderful? Isn't that cute? Isn't that great? If I ever did that, I would be ridiculed all over the place. Lion dog face pony soldier. This is a, this is like giving you a, um, um, bowl of doggy do, put a cherry on top and call it a chocolate sundae. You call women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account is totally Rosie O'Donnell. These are not people. These are animals. The President of the United States. Every day that you think you've seen it all, So that's your field of both the 2016 and 2020 presidential candidates. I mean, this is the best that the two parties can come up with. You know, it is like giving you a bowl of doggy do with a cherry on top and calling it a chocolate sundae, as Speaker Pelosi so eloquently put it. You know, I think there's a lot of people out there who wish there was another choice to vote for president in this year's election. So, you know, I was thinking, and after a lot of thought and consideration, and after consulting with my wife, my family, and my dog, Boo, I want to make an announcement and make it first on Pet Talk today here on 1100 KFNX. So, as of today, I'm officially declaring myself a write-in candidate for president 
of the United States. I've got a bold three-point plan. It's called the Get Real Plan. Now, real is an acronym, you know, like Make America Great Again, except real, R-E-A-L, stands for Restore Exceptionalism to American Lives. I think it's about time that Washington gets real, don't you? So here's my three-point plan to restore exceptionalism to American lives. Number one, I promise in my first 100 days to sign an executive order to put a collar and leash on spending and balance the budget once and for all. Number two, I promise to sign a second executive order to muzzle all lobbyists and keep their dirty little paws out of writing legislation that only benefits billionaires and leaves us common folks to fend for ourselves like a bunch of starving dogs. And number three, I promise to neuter Citizens United and cut the huevos off of unlimited campaign contributions to finally get money out of politics. And I'll do this immediately after being sworn into office as the 46th President of the United States. I, William, having been raised by Wolves Bangura, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. I'm Will Bangura, your host and write-in candidate for president. You're listening to Pet Talk Today on Independent 1100 KFNX. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies. Answering questions and taking your calls. It's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free 866 866- 536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. I'm Will Bangura, your host and write-in candidate for president, and you're listening to Pet Talk Today on Independent 1100 KFNX, where I'm here every Sunday from 12 to 1 p.m. answering your pet behavior and training questions. So if you have a question about your pet's behavior or a question about training uh, your pet, give me a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding metro area, the number to call is 602-277-5369, 602-277. KFNX. If you're outside the Phoenix area, you can call toll free at 866 536 1100. And we've got Bill Brady in studio across from me, and sitting beside me is Brittany. Brittany is my executive assistant at Phoenix Dog Training and also the first person that you'll talk to when contacting us at Phoenix Dog Training. She is absolutely indispensable, and I could not do my job without her. So thank you for that, Brittany, and thank you for being here. Yes, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Now, you were going to be here last week, but I think uh, your your parents came in. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. They came in for my birthday. It was a fun little trip. Yeah, so you, you had a pretty good time, had a good visit. I did, I did. Thank you. Now, they're your parents, so you, you would say that no matter what, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if your parents are listening, I just want to say you did a great job raising her. You have an incredible daughter. I also want to take a second to say a special hello to our listeners around the world. That's right. Uh, We've got listeners around the world that are live streaming our show or they're listening to the Pet Talk Today podcast. Uh, I was shocked. We've got listeners in France, Australia, Denmark, Brazil, Lithuania, United Kingdom, the Kingdom of Jordan, Germany, And, of course, our friends to the north, Canada. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your support, and thank you for your emails and questions. Keep them coming. If you're if you're outside of the United States and you do have a question and you want to email me, you can send your email questions to will at pettalktoday.com, and that also goes for anyone inside the United States. You can email me there as well. Now, it's time for Pet Talk in the News. Hey, Brittany. 
Are you looking for puppy love? <laughs> I am always looking for puppy love. Well, according to this first article, there's now an eHarmony for dog matching that will custom pair you with your perfect furry friend. It says here that when you're ready to add a puppy pal to your family, it can be a gamble to dive into the endeavor with the first cute puppy you see. Doing extensive research into breeds and shelters may also not guarantee you'll find the perfect match. Just like the dating app eHarmony, how I met my dog is custom matching adopters with the perfect shelter dog for them and their family. Now, as much as HowIMetMyDog.com wants to help find the right dog for each person or family, the company wants to find the right family for the dog. Each dog they match up with someone is a shelter dog, a rescue dog, or a dog that needs to be rehomed by private families due to a move or lifestyle change. How I Met My Dog has tried to shift the focus from people searching for a particular breed and love at first sight motivated choices for dogs to matching behavior and lifestyle. How I Met My Dog dot com, they filter through 30 levels of dog and human compatibility, which vastly increases the odds of a successful long term matchup and relationship. Uh, the filters included in the survey come down to personality, expectations and training style. How social you are. Uh, do you have kids? Are you a couch potato or a tireless athlete? What genders and ages live in the house? These are just a few of the things that are taken into account in just like you have a profile, so does each dog. The way it works, you take a 20-minute survey through the pet profile, and then How I Met My Dog will show you what kind of pet parent you are and find your matches. Uh, to learn more about How I Met My Dog or to find your perfect match, you can go to their website at howimetmydog.com. Now, in our second article, the headline reads, Dogs Turn to Humans for Help Faster Than Pigs. It says here, Dogs might be man's best friend, but they've seen some competition from pet pigs in recent years. It says, if you're trying to decide which animal you want as a pet, there's a university in Budapest that might be able to help. Researchers there compared dog and pig behavior through the Family Pet Project. They found that dogs turn to humans faster when they can't solve a problem, while pigs work longer trying to solve the task on their own. Researchers found that dogs are dependent while pigs are persistent. During the study, 10 pigs and 12 dogs were taught to knock over a box to get a treat that was underneath it. After the animals learned to get the treat, the scientists changed the test so that the box was impossible to knock over. During the impossible task, the dogs would look at the humans in the room in about 20 seconds when they realized they were unable to get the treat. Pigs, on the other hand, would continue to try and solve the problem without human help for nearly a minute. From the perspective of thinking about dogs and mini pigs as pets, the study suggests that mini pigs may be more independent than dogs and less likely to turn to humans for help. The key difference between dogs and mini pigs seems to be that mini pigs are more intensely focused on the task in front of them. In addition, pigs were faster than dogs at getting the treats in the experiment, too. You know, the dog people, they get upset with me because I, I talk about how intelligent pigs are, and they're a whole lot more intelligent than than dogs are. Um, and... I think we had a caller what, about two two weeks ago, and uh, she had been watching some TV show, and they had some pigs on there, and um, they were doing, I don't know if they were doing like an agility uh, run or if they were, you know, doing uh, pet tricks with these pigs, like, you know, Letterman's stupid pet tricks. I don't know what they were doing, but, you know, I told her, I said, of course pigs can be trained. They're incredibly intelligent. Um, you know, I trained a pig, and... Um, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life, you know, but I just, I can't help feel guilty, you know? I mean, I love my bacon and eggs, <laughs> you know? And, and oh, I know I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna get in trouble from, from the pig people. And probably for calling them pig people, <laughs> you know? Um, are you a Seinfeld fan? Uh, 
Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, you remember Kramer and, and, and yeah. the episode, you know, with uh, Pig Man, you know, half half pig, <laughs> half man, you know, makes me think about that when I called them pig people. So no offense now. Don't be like Bonnie. OK, don't don't get all riled up when when I call that, because, you know, it's OK. We can call them, you know, dog people. But if we call them pig people, then 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 they get upset. But. You know, like I said, I feel guilty because the pigs, they, they're cute. They, you know, they're, they're cute. And, you know, I'm having a salad. I'm putting my bacon bits on it, you know, and I, I, I just, I start getting upset. And, you know, my dog, Boo, um, I got this nine month old schnauzer. And, um, the funny thing about my dog, Boo, is that when Boo likes to play, the dog snorts like a pig. So, really, <laughs> seriously, I, I, a nine-month-old female miniature schnauzer, and I'll be throwing toys around, I'll be playing tug-of-war with Boo, and Boo starts snorting like a pig. I'm your host, Will Bangura, and you're listening to a Pet Talk Today on Independent Talk, 1100 KFNX. Taking your calls and answering your pet behavior and training questions each and every Sunday from 12 to 1 p.m. It's almost 12.30, and we're going to take a quick break. Don't go away. We will be right back. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies. Answering questions and taking your calls. It's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free 866 866- 536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Will Bangura, and you're listening to Pet Talk Today on Independent 1100 KFNX, where I'm here every Sunday from 12 to 1 p.m. answering your pet behavior and training questions. If you have a question about your pet's behavior or a question about training your pet, give me a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding metro area, the number to call is 602-277-5369, 602-277-KFNX. If you're outside of the Phoenix area, you can call toll-free at 866-536-1100. Also, if uh, you have a question, you can also email your questions to us, and that email address to email questions is will at pettalktoday. Dot com. That's will at pettalktoday.com. And right now we're going to go ahead because we've had a lot of email questions and last week we were not able to get to very many of them. So we're going to go ahead and, and do some uh, email questions. Um, Brittany, what, what questions do we have right now? Email questions. Yeah, this question is from Austin who lives here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, their question is, I have an 11-year-old Shih Tzu Poodle mix. My question is, how do I get my dog to welcome another animal like a rabbit into the house? That's a great question. Thanks for uh, thanks for emailing that to us, Austin. Um, so when you've got another animal, you can never be guaranteed that your dog, whether I don't care whether it's you bring in another dog or you bring in a cat or you bring in a rabbit, you don't know whether or not uh, your dog is going to uh, respond to that in a positive way. Matter of fact, I tell people you better just assume, be on the safe side, that you're going to have a problem because I can't tell you how many calls. Well, will you answer the calls? So we get a lot of calls, don't we, Brittany, from people that um, you know they've got a dog and they went ahead and they brought in a new dog or they yeah. brought in a puppy. Right. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, they're fighting. OK. And so I think a lot of people just assume that, you know, I've got a dog and my dog will be fine with any other dog or any other animal. Um, so the first thing that you want to make sure is the introduction. Now, a lot of people, they do introductions wrong. They just take that rabbit, Austin, and they just go ahead and put it in the dog's face and let the dog sniff it. And the next thing you know, the dog's taken a chomp out of old, you know, uh, <laughs> fluffy there. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and do this slowly. You know, you don't have to do this 
in 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 one one setting in in one meeting you can go ahead and first of all put a leash on your dog and you can go ahead and present that bunny rabbit at a little bit of a distance let your dog just kind of look at it from a little bit of a distance you know hey dogs have an incredible sense of smell so that the bunny doesn't have to be right up there they're they're going to sm- they can smell that bunny up to a mile away that's how good their sense of smell is and so they're going to smell the bunny they're going to go ahead and see the bunny and of course Austin uh, you you probably know this but you know th- if you don't they've got harnesses for bunnies and you can put a leash on the bunny too but you don't want to let the dog and the bunny connect right away you want to see at a distance, how is your dog responding to that bunny? Now, if your dog looks really chilled out and your dog's just hanging out there, well, reward your dog. Reward your dog for having calm, good behavior. And I don't care if this is a bunny rabbit or you're introducing a cat or a parrot or you're introducing another puppy, another dog. You want to do this the same way. And then... If your dog's calm at that distance, you can go and work on it a little bit closer. It's a gradual thing that you want to do. You don't want to do this again very quickly. So you might do that distance for a couple days. And, you know, luckily for you, Austin, you know, the bunny probably has a cage and you can put the bunny back in there. And I want to talk about that, too, because... When you have your dog, don't let your dog just run up to that cage because, you know, if your dog doesn't like the bunny, you know, your dog could be muzzle punching that cage and that's going to be traumatic, you know, for the bunny. Um, but you want to do this gradually and then little by little, you bring the bunny closer and closer to your dog. Each time the dog is calm and relaxed, you go ahead and reward your dog until you can get to the point where the bunny and the dog are really close together. But you need to go ahead and really watch what's happening and and don't rush that process. I've said it before on the show. Um, People try to rush things way too soon and and that's why they have uh, problems. So Austin, hopefully um, that helped you. Hopefully that answered your question and and anybody else that might uh, have an issue like that, hopefully um, that helps you as well. What else do we have? All right, we have another question from Julie, who lives here in the Valley as well. I have an 8-year-old German Shepherd that has extreme anxiety. That's pretty common. Um, I can't even take her for a walk. She runs back to our apartment as soon as she sees someone. I have to take her out late at night to go to the bathroom when no one is around. I've tried CBD to try to calm her down, but that's not even worked. That has not even worked. Um, if I leave the apartment for one minute to take out the garbage, when I come back into the apartment, she acts like I have been gone forever. She has been with me for five years. What can I do to help her with this anxiety? Well, let me just clarify something. You know, you said that, you know, we hear or that's pretty common. Now, it's common for us because at Phoenix Dog Training, you know, about 90% of the dogs that we work with have extreme anxiety, fears, phobias, or they've got extreme aggression. Mm-hmm. And and one of the things I want to say is, hey, if it's really, really extreme, and, and in this case, um, Julie, if your German Shepherd has extreme anxiety, especially if it's widespread, if it's not just related to one specific thing, but you've got a dog that's anxious in many different situations, and that's for anybody out there, you need to first take your dog to the veterinarian, get the dog checked out medically. Because a lot of times, you know, and, and this is only maybe 3 to 7% of dogs, but again, the ones with really extreme anxiety, really extreme aggression, a lot of times there's multiple contributing factors. It's not always just behavior. You know, a lot of people, they rescue dogs today and and they don't know. They don't know what the history is of the dog that they rescued. And a lot of times these rescue organizations, the shelters, you know, they they find these dogs stray. Um, they don't know what kind of trauma that they may have experienced. And that trauma can happen in vitro. It can happen when they're young puppies. You know, by the time they're about 16 weeks of age, things are kind of hardwired. I mean, there are certain developmental stages where they can continue to, to have problems and continue to get traumatized. But the first thing you got to do when it's an extreme thing like that is go to the vet, um, get the dog checked out, rule out any medical issues. Um, now, I think, yeah. You had mentioned that you're in an apartment, which, gosh, 
you know, that makes it especially difficult because, you know, you've got a lot of people in the apartment complex that uh, have dogs. You want to take your dog out and go to the bathroom. And I think, you know, you mentioned here that uh, you probably do this, you know, late at night or maybe early in the morning, you know, trying to avoid the people that are out there. Well, similarly, like I was talking about Austin and his dog and the rabbit and starting things out at a distance. One of the biggest things that you need to do is you need to take your German Shepherd, Julie, and you need to expose your dog to other dogs, but it's got to start at a distance. If your dog's having a meltdown, you are way too close, way too soon, and you're actually working against yourself because if your dog's having a meltdown, we call that the dog being over threshold. And all we're doing is we're validating your dog's unrealistic uh, view that there's a problem. And when we're talking about you leaving the apartment, okay, um, we're talking about time versus distance from something that causes anxiety. So let's say that in the beginning you walk out the door and you take about the count of three and you come back in. And if your dog was relatively calm, reward your dog. And then you go out of the apartment and you maybe go to the count of five and you come back in. If your dog was calm, reward your dog. Now, I know that sounds tedious, but I always tell people, you know, this kind of work, it's not rocket science. It's not that it's all that difficult, but it can be inconvenient. Again, people try to rush through this way too quickly. you got to break this down in little bitty tiny pieces. So maybe for a week, you're stepping out the door for three or four seconds. You come back in, your dog's calm. You're rewarding the dog every time that uh, the dog is calm. And little by little, you work up to 30 seconds, a minute. Once you get to about 15 minutes, you pretty much are in the clear. You know, it's those first 15 minutes that that are very difficult. Now, the other thing that you might try, especially if you've got a dog that's super food motivated. Now, some dogs love peanut butter, and I tell people a lot of times, try a frozen peanut butter Kong. So, you know, you'll take one of those Kong toys, you know, the ones that look like the kind of like a beehive and, and the center is hollowed out, it's open, go ahead and get some peanut butter and go ahead and pack that Kong with peanut butter. Matter of fact, go get two of those. Go to one of the pet stores, get two of these Kong toys and pack two of them with peanut butter and put them in a Ziploc bag and toss them in the freezer. Why the freezer? Well, because once you start leaving a little bit further, we want something that's going to last a little bit longer. And if your dog happens to absolutely love peanut butter, your dog might just just lick all that peanut butter out of that Kong within about two seconds. So we want something that might last a little bit longer. What I recommend is first, you go ahead and give your dog one of these frozen Kong treats, not when you're leaving, but when you're home. You want to go ahead and see whether or not your dog's even going to like it. So if your dog likes it, well, now we've got a tool we might be able to use. You can go ahead, give your dog, when you're getting ready to leave, this frozen Kong treat, And then you walk out of the apartment. And the idea is hopefully that, A, your dog is going to be more interested in in the peanut butter Kong treat, and B, that maybe your dog then is going to just kind of forget about you. And again, you can go out for a little bit. You can kind of listen in an apartment. You know if your dog's frantic, you know, um, because the dog will be whining, the dog will be barking. So watch for that, but try that as well. What we do is it's called counter conditioning. You're going to pair something positive, in this case, that yummy peanut butter Kong treat with something that your dog doesn't like. Try that. You know, there's a lot of dogs that have uh, crate anxiety, separation anxiety. Try that. But, hey, get your dog to the vet. Make sure that it's not something medical, okay? We're going to take a quick break here. This is Will Bangura. You're listening to Pet Talk Today on 1100 KFNX. We'll be right back. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies. Answering questions and taking your calls. It's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free 866. 
866-536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Will Bangura, and you're listening to Pet Talk Today on Independent Talk 1100 KFNX. We're here talking about your pets and answering your pet behavior and training questions each and every Sunday from 12 to noon, or excuse me, from noon to 1 p.m., uh, give us a call right now with your questions about your pet's behavior. If you're in the Phoenix or surrounding metro area, the number to call is 602-277-5369, 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of the Phoenix area can call toll-free at 866-536-1100. And today we're taking a lot of your email questions. We got a bunch of email questions and uh, the last a uh, couple of weeks, we haven't had a lot of time to be able to take those email questions. Um, if you do have a question, especially if you're live streaming and, and you're not, um, you know, in the Phoenix, Arizona area um, and you can't call in and you've got a question, feel free. Email me the question and we can go ahead and read that on air and answer your questions. If you do have a question, email that to me at will at PetTalkToday.com. That's Will at PetTalkToday.com. Brittany, what's our next question? All right. This question is from Sandy, who lives here in Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, my, Sandy. My three-year-old rescue is still wanting to run out the front door and chase rabbits. He will take any chance he can to run out and chase rabbits. How can I get him to stop running out the door? Well, Sandy, um, you might want to give Austin a call, okay? And you guys could have a little play date with, with your rabbits there. Um, no, a little bit different. Um, but however, you know, maybe you can get a hold of Austin and you can use Austin's uh, rabbit for bait as you're practicing, you know, teaching, teach, teaching your dog not to run out the door there. Um, you know, bottom line, this comes down to what we call um, barrier training. Okay, and one of the things that we teach at Phoenix Dog Training is that no dog should ever run out or go out the door, breach that barrier, that threshold, without uh, permission. And we encourage people to be very proactive with this. And one of the things is when you open the door, you know, most of the time in the house, the front door, you open it up, well, it opens inward, okay? And so the door is probably what? I don't know, three three feet, something like that. So, all right, the door stopper. you got the door stopper on the wall, okay? And that's about three feet back from the actual threshold where you walk out of the house. You want to teach your dog to never go past that point, okay? And you can do that by teaching alternative behaviors like a sit-stay, a down-stay. And what you want to do is proactively kind of try to bait your dog to kind of move forward. And what you can do is you can use what's called spatial pressure. You start moving your body into your dog quickly. And most dogs don't like that. Your dog's going to probably begin to start to back up. And by the way, have a leash on your dog anytime you're training. Listen, if you don't have reliable behaviors with your dog and you're trying to teach it, make sure you've got a leash on your dog so you've got a tool to kind of help out. Uh, the other thing you can do if you can't get that spatial pressure to push the dog back, you can put just very gentle, very light, don't abuse your dogs now, folks, very gentle, very light pressure upward on the leash as your dog's trying to move forward. Now, remember, don't do this right at the where, where the door and the outside meet. Do this three feet back from, you know, the, the doorway so that you can teach your dog there's a little bit of a barrier. There's kind of a buffer there. Um, when your dog doesn't take the bait, because you're trying to coax the dog to move forward, when the dog doesn't take the bait, go ahead and reward your dog. All right? And so this is an exercise, you know, that you can do this maybe three, four times a day. Do that every day until you've got some good reliability. And, you know, I have a thing called the rule of three. And so... If your dog does it successfully three times and you've rewarded your dog three times, go ahead and stop. Stop on a win. 
but get your dog to do it three times successfully before you do stop. But give that a try. And, you know, the rabbit is really exciting on the other end of that door. So eventually you're baiting, you're coaxing to get the dog moving forward. You're going to have to get pretty excitable because that rabbit's going to get the dog excitable. But again, use spatial pressure, run into the dog um, if you need to. Use very light, gentle, upward pressure on the leash. Don't hurt the dog. Don't abuse the dog. Just make it eh, just a tiny bit uncomfortable. And when your dog doesn't move forward, reward your dog with a treat. Hope that helps you. What else we got? This question is from Arlene, who lives in Phoenix, Arizona. This one's kind of funny. My dad got a German Shepherd, who is a year old. When I go into the backyard with him, he jumps on me and starts to bite me. I have to suit up to go back there with him. (laughs) Could he still be teething, or are these love bites? I have given him calming treats. How do I correct this behavior? Thanks for that question, Arlene. Well, the first thing I want to say is if your dad's dog is about a year old, then most likely this is... Definitely not um, a teething issue. Most dogs, they stop teething um, at about seven months and, and their adult teeth come in. So we shouldn't have any issues there. Um, well, you know, it sounds to me that the dog's just really unruly, really excitable, really excited to see you. OK, um, so. Just like I said in that last question. OK, and, and when we're talking about training a new behavior, have a leash on the dog. So when you take the dog out back, when you go out back with the dog, have a leash on the dog, okay? Because then you're able to give a correction to the dog, okay? And now corrections should be tempered. Every dog has a different personality. You know, some dogs are really soft. Some dogs, you barely look at them and they fall apart and they start peeing themselves, you know? And then you've got other dogs. They're really hard dogs. You can practically kick them upside the head and they're like, yeah, that was cool. Do that again. That was fun. (laughs) Now, little... A little disclaimer here. I'm not telling anybody to kick their dog upside the head, okay? But you got to have a tool where you can possibly give a correction to the dog. So your dog begins to jump on you. If you've got a little bit of a longer leash and you know the dog's going to do that, okay, step on the leash. Step on the leash till you get to the point where the dog might be trying to jump up. But it really can't go anywhere. And that's almost like a self-correction. Every time the dog tries to go up, if you're stepping on the leash, and keep your foot on that leash, okay? When the dog stops trying to jump up, because obviously it's not going to work if you're stepping on the leash, then go ahead and reward the dog. And this, again, don't be just reactive when you go out there and all of a sudden this happens. Be proactive. Get out there. Do this several times a week. If you can do this daily, I don't know how often you're at your dad's house, but as often as you can be there, get out there, do this with the dog, you know, do this, you know, at least, at least five repetitions. But, you know, you want to do that multiple times. If you can do that multiple times throughout the day, um, do that. But at a minimum, uh, do that about five times in a row and make sure that the dog doesn't jump. Now, Once that's going well, because sometimes, you know, hey, maybe it's not you, but maybe it's somebody else that that comes in and they're really excitable. And that gets a dog all jacked up and they want to jump. So get yourself a little bit excitable. But wait till you have success first, because, again, you need to train harder than real life. And if you do that, then it's a piece of cake, because anybody can get their dog to stop jumping when things are calm and quiet and there's nothing going on. When you really need the training to work, when you really need your dog to listen, it's when things go crazy. So little by little, you want to desensitize your dog. You want to go crazy. But in the beginning, okay, in the beginning when you begin to try this, Arlene, um, make sure that you're calm. Because the more excited you are, the more excited the dog's going to be. The calmer you are, the calmer the dog's going to be. Don't engage a dog. Don't touch a dog. Don't play with the dog, okay? So give that a try. Hopefully that helps Arlene. And we've got a little bit of time. Maybe we can take one, maybe two more questions. What's our next question? All right. This question is from Ethel, who lives in Buckeye, Arizona. My daughter's dog, Lucy, is extremely afraid of big guys, no matter how much they try to win her over. What can be done to help Lucy get over this fear? Well, your daughter could date a short guy. I mean, that would kind of take care of that problem, you know. Um, Again, slow, gradual exposure, 
people try to expose their dogs too much. You know, if, if the guy's walking in and all of a sudden, you know, so close to the dog, of course the dog's going to be afraid. But if you get to a certain distance, you know, maybe a hundred yards out, now the dog's calm. You can reward the dog then. Um, but you want to make sure that you're working at a distance that the dog can handle and reward the dog for that. You want to do this, you know, several times a day. Um, sometimes this stuff, you know, it can go ahead. It, it can take, um, uh, you know, it can take six. It can take six to eight weeks. So take your time doing that. It's gradual and systematic desensitization. Um, it's not something where you want to do this quickly and uh, and flood the dog. Well, we are just about out of time. I want to thank everybody for their questions um, and anybody that might have submitted uh, those emails. Keep doing that. Brittany, thanks uh, for helping out today. Bill Brady, thank you for your mentorship. It has been a pleasure and an honor to learn from you, sir. And to all of our listeners, be sure to listen to Pet Talk today on Independent Talk 1100 uh, KFNX next Sunday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. where we'll be answering more of your pet behavior and training questions. I'm Will Van Groa. Have a great rest of your weekend. Stay safe. Wear your masks. Up next after the news is the weekend with Joe Peggs.